All right, guys, so today we're gonna to talk about the concept of adding value. So adding value is a very important concept uh, for trading, uh, especially if you're trying to learn from other people and be part of a community or just be around like successful people. Actually, just to be around successful people in general, you gotta be, um, you gotta be ad adding value all the time. You, you cannot be a leech. The concept of a leech, do not be a leech. So, um, I'm just gonna go into it. So yeah, in, in 2021, I, I moved to Puerto Rico uh, for a year and I was part of the trade space office over there, right? A lot of traders were there and I was actually, I was, I grinded for exactly like, like 2019 until like 2020 and um, nonstop in my little office in LA. And uh, I, was, I was going through a lot, you know, and just grinding and I was making money in the markets 2020, right? COVID pandemic mania. And then the beginning of 2021, you had the AMC, GME, the meme stock mania. And I, um, I profited off that. Now I moved to Puerto Rico, April. It was before, yeah, in April. It was my birthday's April 24th. I wanted to go there before that. So this was, so all of 2021, for the most part, I was in Puerto Rico. And, um, and I was, I was pretty, pretty intermediate, I would say, you know, like, 18 to 20 hours a day I was doing, reading all the books, ordering any single book I, I could get my hands on. Cause I was making money in the market, right? So I was like, you know, now I could afford these 30, $40 books. I'll still get them like used on Amazon. There's another website called Thrift Books or eBay. There's a lot of these books. Um, it's hard to get your hands on. And I was getting audio books first. So first I get it on audio book. I listen to it on audio. And if it's not on audio, you got to get it the physical, just like, um, for example, the Japanese candlesticks by Steve Neeson. I just posted on Twitter today about that, how I, I, I looked at this old video of Japanese candlesticks that I made, uh, 2021, October, 2021. And, um, that's crazy. Like my office was like half done. I was still trading off the surface pro, but I, to my, in my defense, I was in Puerto Rico mostly. I, this is like, um, I was getting my office together every few months when I would come back to LA for like a week or so. So I was really trading off the computer in Puerto Rico, not off the tablet anymore. But when I was in LA, yeah, I was trading off the tablet. But you can see the office is like half done, it's under construction and I'm just grinding. So even though I was reading all of Steve Neeson's book, books, he has two books and he also has a charting course book which I, I recommend, you know? So I read these books like two or three times and um, you just gotta go through them. You don't, you, to understand the concepts because you need to know how the candles perform in, in, the, in the charts, you know? So you gotta be able to recognize it. That's all you need. You don't need to break it down like a charting technician or anything. But um, I got what I needed to get out of those books. But anyway, I just wanna make a point. So like after all that grinding, I still didn't know that much. I didn't know that much. Um, just the market was, was volatile and I was, I was doing well. It's not like that anymore though. But anyways, um, now you really gotta know your stuff to make money in this kind of market. But anyway, when I went to Puerto Rico, I realized even though I made some money, I didn't know that much. And I was surrounded by really experienced traders that have been trading in the markets for 20 years. They were my age, but they were trading for 20 years. While I was in architecture school, they were trading for 20 years, 15 years, 10 years. So I was like, man, uh, and I, I didn't make any, that much money compared to them. I'm talking about seven, eight figure traders, you know? And um, so I was in this environment and I'm like, I'm humbled big time, right? So like, I'm just trying to add value so I can pick up things. So I knew when I signed this, this contract for a year over there, I was gonna have to, I, I saw it like college. I'm going to college all over again and I'm gonna have to learn from everybody around me. You know, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna absorb whatever I can, you know, because like I'm over here studying all these webinars, all these YouTube videos, all these video lessons, webinars, but it's not like, it's not like in person learning from pros that have been doing it for 10, 15 years. And you get to ask them questions directly and deal with them on a daily basis and see like their routines, their schedules, um, the, the intricacies, you know? of day in, day out. Like for example, all these traders that you follow, everybody, they all have multiple accounts. They all, you know, they're not reporting all their accounts. It's like, they're not showing everything, you know? They're not showing everything. But like when I was there in person, I got to see a lot of things 
and it started to piece the puzzle together that you will never find on YouTube, you will never find on any trading community, you will never try because trading is so personal and like in the mo like unless you're shadowing the person and they don't even know because like if you shadow some I don't want anyone shadowing me because it affect my trading. It's like someone breathing on my neck, but like. If you're, do, if you're doing it like in this kind of uh, an office setting, that's why these like prop firms like um, SMB and all that exist, you know, like they're high quality because they have that in-person thing and they have meetings in the morning, they go over stuff, they all, all it's a culture, it's a culture. Um, but yeah, so I knew right away I was gonna have to add value somewhat, in, or somehow to, to uh, people in the office because if not, they're just gonna get sick of me asking questions or just just being there, you know what I mean? And um, I understood this right away so I would always uh go out of my way to like provide value how like for example there was a chat box and the, the, all the computers were connected to I would I was always in the office earlier than anybody because I was trading pre-market so I would put the top stocks like whatever I knew that I could give value I would do my best you know what I mean because I knew I got to give value to get value like it's just gonna make everything work so especially around highly successful people. So I would always uh, write down the stocks that were happening in the pre-market. I would write their details, example, market cap, uh, the news, and my thesis, or, and the flow. I would put like like five or six, like a rundown, like almost like an analyst, you know what I mean? So I was like, the, I, I, in a way, the analyst uh, in there. And the big traders next to me, the same thing, I would give a, if I get those text messages of pump and dumps, I, I, I still have them to this day. This is like a, a habit of mine. I'll run it down. I'll run it by uh, the traders next to me. That's adding value. Cause I know they just woke up, they're in the office, they're getting ready. Now imagine, then I come in and just report, boom, boom, boom. And um, hey, check it out. This is the, the hot stocks. This is the stocks in the morning. This is the rundown, this is the float, this is the news, this is the sector. And this is the text messages I got. Check it out, I got these shit codes shit goes all right here it, they got compensated 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 it's the same pumper as this one in the past look at the chart it's a downward chart it's a lock of expiration it looks like a 90-day lock of expiration this is a company that's based out of here based out of there underwriters this you know maybe I'm, I'm a little bit better with it now but i was trying my best with it uh, a couple years ago with whatever i knew and um and then when i have questions i've earned the answer you know if I have an a uh, question I remember one time um, I put in the in my rundown in the morning uh, this stock has an ATM and I thought I did my do you know I thought I provided the value and uh, one, one of the traders says it threw him off right because like what happens if you would have shorted it and um, the ATM wasn't registered so I didn't know how to look for an effect because back then, this is just two years ago, it was only Filings Pro. Was it Filings Pro? Yes, the free version. It wasn't uh, Dilution Tracker. Dilution Tracker does it. It says effect. But uh, that's how I found out about the effect. And he, you know, he told me about it. And that's because, you know, I, I earned that, um, that lesson. He didn't, you know, he went out of his way and told me about it. And, uh, you know, another trader had a Bloomberg Terminal and like, could ask him whatever question you want because like he has Bloomberg terminal analysts and stuff so like in order for me to it's it's got to be a, a you got to reciprocate you know what I mean reciprocate the value you can't just leech so always no matter what level you are at you can always add value and I can I see this in in uh, for example the friendly bear research community right the discord we have in the trade floor there's a culture man you got to add value if you're not adding value if you're just leeching there's a there's a what do you call it there's a, a lifespan on that you know it's like you're not gonna last too long in there you're gonna get demoted or you're gonna you know something you gotta always add value um, I know I'm always adding value because I have a lot of knowledge by now I have a a lot of knowledge not only from all the knowledge that I accumulated from like 2018 to 2020 studying the market to, as much as I could, but also like going to seek the knowledge in, in, uh, from, the, from the best in the world. And then also starting a podcast. So the podcast 
started because I wanted to like learn from other successful traders, but like you need to come to the table with some value. And what is some value? You know, podcast. You're getting information, you're documenting it forever. You know, when it's something on, on and I have it on audio, later it became on visual, uh, YouTube. Uh, it's on Spotify, Amazon, Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, whatever. I don't know what else is out there. Pandora, I don't know. It's on everywhere. Everywhere that has an RSS feed, it's there. And uh, that that's adding value. Me going through that and, and, and uh, publishing it and writing a description and organizing it, that's value. So even though in the beginning when I started the podcast, I did not know... Um, I did not know as much as I do now, by far, not, you know, it's, uh, and when I reached out to people, I knew I had to like propose some value. Say, hey, you know, uh, first of all, I did provide some value because I was already a six figure trader when I, when I started the podcast. So I was like, I'm in Puerto Rico. I'm at the trade space. I'm in a community of traders. Um, I read this, I, usually I read their whole book. You know, I read their book and I point out some specific things. So like they know I read it. Just like I know when someone goes through, when someone says, I listen to your podcast, I love your podcast. And they, I could tell by the message, you know, someone, for example, a while ago said, I love your podcast. And they referenced this one podcast that was like 15 minutes long. It was a week podcast, one of the weak ones. And I was like, oh, this person's not really a fan of the podcast. Like you're just saying that. But um, when someone... For example, shout out to Dorian. When Dorian, and he's a moderator now in the Friendly Bear Discord, he um, reached out to me about a year ago. And, um, I, you know, we, we started talking. At first, I gave him, like, I didn't pay much attention. And he started to mention some things, like, wait a second, oh, okay, this guy is, is, is serious. I heard him mention, like, filings and uh, the book Pipes, and started mentioning some podcasts that are, you have to dig deep for those podcasts. And, um, Michael Matthews. When you mention Michael Matthews, like, whoa, okay. By the way, shout out to Michael Matthews. I spoke to him today on LinkedIn. Um, he's in the dark. He's doing his thing. Um, very high-performing person, you know? So, but uh, when you start mentioning these intricate things of, like, my journey, and because there's 500 episodes, I, at that time, there was 300. I was like, okay, this person actually went 2.0 speeds and did all of them. And, and the way they're talking, like, communicating back and forth, the level of questions, there's some thought to the questions and there's like um there's you know it's like you did your he did his homework he, he actually wants to learn and want you know he's a sponge you know so and also he dorian adds value like crazy since the since the beginning since i first met him online you know so now and it, it pushes me to, to to do more for example I reread the Pipes book. I think well, that, that was with Wes, by the way. Shout out to Wes too. But uh, we like we went over the Pipes concepts. We did a Q and A. We he's doing like we're doing research together. We're doing like all types. Of, you know what I mean? So like he's adding value constantly. And you know, you don't gotta be at the same level of trader as someone that you're seeking answers to. Or you don't gotta even pretend. There's so many people that want to pretend that they're at that level. You know, when you say something, they're just like, yeah, yeah, but they don't really know what you're talking about. That's their ego getting in the way. And I, I see this all the time. And I, I make a mental note. It's like, whoa, okay, this person, that's a red flag, uh, you know? So instead of saying, pretend, you know, actually admitting or just being honest that they don't know what you're talking about or, or just like asking a question about, hey, what, what do you mean? Like, what is that? They pretend, they go with, the, they go with it and they make a comment that's like, you know, it's a fake comment. You know, they, they really don't know what they're talking about. Yeah, it's a red flag, by the way. You know, I make a mental note of that right away. But, um, but yeah, man, adding value. How do you add value? You know, so for example, in the Friendly Bear Research uh, trade floor, you know, when I ask, uh, sometimes I'm in my apartment or like I'm on the road. When I was traveling last year, I asked for the borrow fee rate. Someone's always on top of the borrow fee rate. Um, someone's always on top of like the news. You know, you don't gotta be a profitable trader to like check multiple sources of news and put it out there and be like, hey, look guys, or hey guys, be careful, this is a Chinese stock. Hey guys, uh, Bao said is the underwriter for this. Um, 
Network One is the underwriter for this. I found some exercise prices. Boom, here you go. Be careful with this warrant. This stock has, had, look at the history of this day, that day. Um, maybe this pumper saying this, that pumper saying that. You know, so warnings, war warnings save money, warnings save lives, you know, so that's adding value. I know, um, going back to my Puerto Rico experience um, at Trade Space, I'm sitting next to um, Adam Geffert, right? White Diamond Research. We did a lot of podcasts together, man, and nobody watched those podcasts. Nobody watches them. And he's um, Trade Space on Kimpo. You know, nobody knows that either. And nobody even goes this far deep into the podcast for, for, to hear me say it. <laughs> That's why I don't mind saying it. But um, he's sitting next to me, and I only have one account at the time. I have interactive brokers, and that's it. And this guy has, like, every account known to man. And it's my first time seeing this. I'm like, whoa, okay, so having a lot of accounts. Because no traders talk about that, how they have a lot of accounts. They only talk about the one they're promoting, you know? So... Um, you know what I mean? But like, it's a, when I saw that, oh, and I saw he has a CFA license. He's, he's handling clients and stuff and he's writing reports and he's trading. I got to see all this in person. Like, how do I add value to someone like this? You know, like I'm sitting right next to him and I'm like, just the pump and dumps, first of all. And I discovered uh, FLGC, the floor of growth. I saw that one being pumped and send text messages and you know, I, I threw it out there, right? I put it, I, I mentioned it and he got ideas from it. And I went, I ended up going to Columbia, you know, and exposing it. Everybody knows that already by now. If you follow the podcast, you know about that story. But, um, that's all. Oh, by the way, I went to Columbia. I flew there to add value, to add value. That was it. I wanted to prove myself. And I was like, man, nobody wanted to go to Columbia. Nobody wants to go there. And it's hard to get like an interpreter or an investigator down there to do the job that needed to be done, which is to go to the mountain, three hours up the, up the freaking uh, mountain uh, on a motorcycle with there's no electricity, no Wi-Fi up there, it's raining all the time. Nobody wants to do that. But like, I was like, you know what? This is gonna be, I'm gonna add value. Cause um, as much as a, a, like a, a, a nice clean cut guy I am, man, I'm down to get really dirty and go and, and uh, expose like James Bond style at any moment. You know, so I can do that. I'll show up to anybody's door and, you know, for a short report. No problem. I'm, I'm down to do that. That's it. That was fun. Um, but yeah, that was the ultimate adding value, right? Because like I was the last piece of the puzzle for that short report that get to gather the damning evidence that needed to be done, you know? So that was, you know, it, it had to be proven. So that was adding value. Adding value anyway, and I only had an interactive broker's account. Now I have a lot of accounts, my own accounts, but um, I made a lot of money since then. But um, at the time, I didn't have. I was, you know, you could be six figures, but you, six figures means you have a hundred thousand. Doesn't mean ninety nine nine hundred ninety nine thousand. Means a hundred thousand. I always find it interesting when people say like, six figures, or like when I say six six figures could mean anything. Seven figure trader, seven figure can mean one million. What is it to 99 million? <laughs> it's, it's crazy, but um, but yeah, at the time I was a, a six figure trader with the interactive brokers account, and that's it. And like, I kind of knew what I was doing, it was just a really hot market. I wish I can go back in time in that market, man. I'll destroy it. That goes to show you, you got, you got to get the knowledge as soon as you can because every five to ten years, you're gonna have a big opportunity and you got to be ready in trading or without trading like in life there's just going to be five to ten years opportunity and um you got to get equipped with the knowledge uh with whatever you're trying to do but um be yeah, adding value man you don't got to be a, a even a profitable trader to add value um to start to wrap it up okay so i i, I when i saw i think it was lance bernstein he made um he made a, a YouTube video about adding value when he was working at a firm. I forgot which firm he worked for. He's an eight-figure trader now. But, you know, he, he would, uh, I think, I don't know what he was, I forgot what he was doing, but he was like even giving coffee or getting, adding, bringing coffee to the traders is adding value. Like whatever you can do, whatever you can do. I remember, you know, when I used to play team sports, I remember in track and field, 
I got injured in high school and uh, you know, I think one of the ways I was providing value at the time was like helping everybody stretch. <laughs> it's like trading, man. Well, I didn't know what I was doing. I was in high school. But it's like trading, even if you gotta like, I don't know as far as like going to stretch the traders or whatever, but like, you know, if you're in a community or you're in person trying to, you know, get, get lessons from a successful person, a, a mentor, you gotta add value. You gotta add value, man. Always add value. Well, anyways, um, I'm gonna start to wrap it up now. I'm actually at the um, the Academy Award Museum Saturday right now, and uh, Renzo Piano was the architect of this space. It's like a concrete cube, and uh, 30 years ago he designed the building next door. He's an uh, Italian architect, really, really a famous architect. But uh, yeah, I'm just enjoying it right now. You gotta see the back is uh, the Hollywood sign is somewhere around there. But um, yeah, summertime, clear skies, nice and warm. And um, in two weeks is gonna be the Conscious Trading Conference in downtown LA, in Little Tokyo. Some tickets left over for that. Go grab them. It's online in the show notes. Um, and yeah, man, I'll see you guys later.